Hey guys, welcome back to the video. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about a very popular topic which a lot of you guys like to bring up, right? Which is about why do startups run in losses? Now, not all startups run in losses, but majority of the consumer startups that you see, by consumer startups, I mean startups that we all are familiar with. Cred, Unacademy, or Zomato, or Paytm, or even us, as a matter of fact. Why are all of these startups running in losses? Like, why don't they make money? I mean, even if they make money, why do they have their expenses, which are so massive, right? Here's my two cents on this. Here's what my opinion is. Maybe it'll help you guys clear things up. And at the same time, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this topic. So you can leave that in the comment section down below. Now, let's talk about B2C companies, right? B2C companies stand for business to consumer. And business to consumer means that you're selling directly to your customers. There's another type of company, which is B2B, which sells directly to other businesses. So if I'm say Facebook, Facebook doesn't make money off its users, right? It makes money off other businesses. If the other businesses want to advertise on Facebook, they pay Facebook or fair Facebook deal kar leta hai. Jo users hai, like when I use Instagram or Facebook, I don't get charged, right? So these are called B2B companies, companies which sell to other businesses. For example, wholesalers selling it to retailers, all of that, that's all B2B, right? Now comes the second type of companies, which are B2C companies, companies that you, me, all of us are familiar with. So if you order from Swiggy, that means it's a consumer tech company because it's something that you directly use. Swiggy is selling directly to consumers and not other businesses. And a lot of these B2C companies are companies which require a lot of marketing efforts in order to reach a large amount of audience. So it's totally fine if you run a small business which caters to a couple of people. For example, say there's a tuition teacher and she wants to teach like 10 kids around her colony. She can run a profitable business. She can charge like, you know, 5,000 rupees a month from each student and I don't know, 10 students, like that's like 50,000 rupees a month. And she can run a small business completely profitable. But if a company like Unacademy wants to become large, then they would not be fine with like 10 students. They want to like target millions of students, right? And in order to reach millions of students, you have to spend a lot initially and you have to like reach a critical mass in order to actually, you know, build a large business out of it, right? Facebook, for example, in its initial days did not monetize. For the first one, two years, they just kept expanding and reaching a couple of million users before they even started monetizing. Because a lot of this works on scale. A lot of these businesses like Paytm, Zomato, Swiggy work on scale. Let's take an example of Swiggy. From each order, let's assume Swiggy makes like 15 rupees, right? So if Swiggy as a business is making just 15 rupees per order, then in order for it to become a large company, for it to make hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, it needs a couple of million orders every single day. And how do you like immediately get a couple of million users, right? You have to advertise, you have to spend on marketing, you have to spend on growth. And that's where most of the money goes. So Cred, for example, has around 5 million users today. And it has spent so much money on marketing. It has, you can see Cred holdings everywhere. You can see IPL ads everywhere. The reason it's spending so much on marketing is because they're focusing on the first part of the funnel, which is acquiring users and getting as many people as possible. And now once they have 5 million users, 5 million really good users, they can roll out products for them and the impact and the scale that they'll have will be much larger. So potentially five years from now, Cred would be making way more money with its 5 million users than what it would be making with say a hundred users, right? So I think usually in the B2C space, it always pays off to monetize later. But then again, this could go wrong as well. What if you keep your product free for a very long time and then when you later monetize, it just fails. And a good example would be Quibi. Quibi was this US company which wanted to become larger than Netflix at one point in time. And it raised billions of dollars and it gave its content away for free, unlike Netflix, which was charging. And then later when Quibi started monetizing it, though it had millions of users, people did not pay for the product because it wasn't good enough and it as a company shut down. So it could backfire as well, right? But still the popular word on the street is that grow, get a lot of users, and then you can figure out a lot of infinite ways of monetizing your audience and the users that you have. So that's one of the major reasons why companies like Paytm spend so much in marketing, spend so much in acquiring users, spend so much in building a valuable product, and then later on figuring out different ways of monetizing it. It's a very untraditional way of building businesses, not like the traditional Kirana store where 
from day one, all you look at is profitability. These are like businesses which take a different approach. There's no right and wrong. It depends on the type of business, right? So a lot of business raise a lot of venture capital money, raise a lot of money to experiment, try out which ones work, which ideas work, which don't. And then later on, figure out how to make money. Because ultimately, you'll only make money if you give something valuable. And if you, from day one, just focus on money, and then there's a high chance that you might not end up building something valuable because your sole priority is not solving a problem, but it's making money. So I think that's one of the main reasons why a lot of these VC funds invest in game-changing ideas, which could potentially become large in the future. Could work, could not work, but that's the risk that everyone's taking. And that's how the entire system works. That's pretty much it, guys. I hope you got a little bit of insight. Sorry for throwing in so many examples at once. I'm just doing this impromptu. Do I just opened my phone and clicked on the record button and I haven't stopped. I would really love to know what you think about these. Do you think businesses should look at profitability from day one or does it depend or do you disagree or do you agree with me? You can drop things in the comment section down below. Would love to read them and give my opinion on it as well. And if you want to join a group of smart people and an amazing community that provides you real value, then do join in Blue Learn. We're a bunch of cool college students exploring, learning together and networking together. Link is given in the description down below. We have amazing events every single day. So would love to see you at some of those. And I think a lot of you might have a question. What is Blue Learn doing? Yeah, we don't make any revenue. We still haven't figured out a business model yet, but we'll soon do. That's for later. For now, all our energy is put into building a valuable product that could have a real impact. Maybe I could make a later video explaining how we'll make money and stuff like that, but it's too early for us. We're still figuring out what's the best product that suits our audience. And yeah, we'll be completely transparent to you guys. It's a company that we're building in public. So things will be super transparent. Don't worry about it. I'll let you know as soon as we have updates. And that's pretty much it, guys. I uh, hope you like this video. And do hit the subscribe button. Do join our community. And do keep supporting. Take care. Bye.